Hey guys, good morning. It's probably not morning when you're seeing this, but it's morning to me. <laughs> I can't get too wrapped up in here because I came down to harvest cucumbers, but I just wanted to show you my tomato tunnel. Now it's nowhere close to being done, but I did get two rows done and that's a win. The way that I do my tomatoes in the, for like production in the greenhouse is I train them to one liter and the plants are about two feet apart both and two rows with nice wide walkways down the center. So far, I'm really loving this. They have plenty of room, plenty of airflow. I did go through and I've trellised and pruned two whole rows and you can see the difference in this trellised and pruned row, nice and tidy versus the jungle that's happening over here. And that's fine, I'll just go through and I'll trim the lower branches off and all the suckers and then get them on a trellis. It's not that big of a deal right now, but if I let it get much more out of control, it will be hard to rein in. So that's on the to-do list soon. But I also have, you know, a hundred million other things on my to-do list. So let's harvest some cucumbers this morning. So as you can see, these aren't trellis or pruned yet either. Um, <laughs> it was supposed to be done by now, but it's not and it's fine. What I, it's a jungle, so I'm gonna be picking these. Um, what I will say though is, I don't know where you are, but I am having awful trouble with cucumber beetles. They are ruining my life. Um, and there's really not much I can do about them except hand pick and I was doing that, but you know, now I have a billion other things to do. So I will get what I get off of these plants and as they succumb to disease or pest pressure, I will just pull them out. And I left, I have peppers in here, this whole row's peppers. And then I have like another row, but I did leave spaces for my second succession of cucumbers and that's how I'm gonna beat the pests because everything has a cycle. I'm not sure if these little demonic striped bugs are all season, they probably are. But my second succession, I will cover with row cover, um, like insect netting until they flower and then at which point I have to take it off anyway but that buys me a little extra time to get the plants um, up and going and bigger and healthier before the pests come and riddle them but that's how I beat pests is I just my things that have high pest pressure like squash and cucumbers especially those are my two main ones um, I just sow multiple times so instead of just having one planting all season, I'll do two, if not three. And that's how I beat them. <sighs> Sometimes. I planted two different kinds of cucumbers in this tunnel. One is a classic um, greenhouse variety. It's spineless. If the bugs would stop chewing on it, it would be beautiful. Um, but my customers don't need them to be perfect. They understand, they just appreciate that I am growing them, you know, without any chemicals. So if a little bug bite here and there is not hurting anything, at least that's what I think. I planted those and I'm really liking them. And I also had to plant my favorite that I've squished it, but literally a cucumber beetle on it. Demon Silver Slicer. I love this cucumber. It's it's crispy, it's crunchy, it's delicious. And and you know like when you accidentally forget a cucumber and it gets giant and it gets really bitter, these don't get bitter, which is what I appreciate out of them because sometimes you just can't get to everything, you know. So, I'm going to go through and harvest. I did a harvest a couple days ago, but I'm going to assume by now that there's more to pick and I'm going to pick what is ready because I'm fancy now and I have a cool room 
which I'll show you. I'm not sure um, who decided, it was me, but I'm not sure who decided that I needed 180 cucumber plants, but this is absolutely bonkers and they're going to be coming out of my ears. I'm going to be eating cucumbers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and trying to give them to everyone I know. But hey, I've had worse problems than having too much food. While I'm out here, I'm just squishing any bugs I see because they want to take everything I love. I'm going to be overpacking cucumbers in this week's box, I tell you that. So the worst part about the cucumber beetle isn't them chewing on the fruit and the leaves. I can honestly handle that. It's the fact that they can turn a perfectly healthy plant into this limp, nasty, ugly, diseased plant. They carry, cucumber beetles carry a and there's, they're all over this, carry a disease called the mosaic virus, cucumber mosaic virus. I don't know if it's cucumber, but uh, it's a bacterial wilt. So they carry some form of bacteria that affects the plant and turns it into mush. And so every time I find one, I mean, thank goodness I planted extra, you know, because I've been tossing these bad boys out. Every time I find one, I take it out so that it doesn't spread to its neighbors. But while I pick, do you want to talk? <laughs> I mean, you can't talk back, but um, you can tell me in the comments, I guess. <laughs> How do people choose what they want to be when they grow up? And how do people not have I mean, I guess I only know how my brain works because it's the only brain I've ever had. So I don't know how like a very type A person that like, I don't know. I don't know how they would react to certain things, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But how do you decide just one thing? I'm interested in so many things. Obviously, the plant thing really has a stranglehold on me, you know. But beyond plants, I also want to grow all my own food. Obviously, that goes with the plants. And I want to be a potter, I think. That would be fun. And I want to sew all my own clothes. And I want to be a silversmith. I want to make jewelry. I want to find um crystals in the wild and form them into jewelry i want to be a leather leatherman i want to tan hides and make my own things i want to trap animals and turn fur into like slippers and gloves and hats and scarves and i want to <laughs> cook all my own food from scratch and i want to live off the grid and just like make fires and shower in the spring and be wild and free and um, I, I wish that I had the time to do all of those things and I think that this year I'm really gonna utilize, utilize my winter rest Normally, I'm just pouting all winter and I lot I'm not gonna lie. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I read a lot of books um, I'm, I love information. I love learning things that I didn't know before. I'm just so interested. And how are people not just so curious about the world around them and how everything works? And I want to make and bottle my own essential oil and I want to make wine and I want to make hard cider and I want to, I just, I'm interested in everything.
Another reason why I like the Silver Slicer is because in a sea of green, these are white. And so they're very easy to spot and pick. But look how beautiful these are. They're more bug resistant as well um, than green varieties. Typically, from my experience, they and they do really well in the heat and they don't get bitter. And they're my favorite cucumber. My potato plots are looking lovely. I mulched with hay. Not, I mean, it was pretty thick, but not thick enough to keep weeds down. Obviously, you can see the weeds here. I think that even though the hay mulch isn't suppressing weeds, really, at all, I think that the benefit to the soil, uh, I think that's where I'm going to see the biggest change because hay obviously um, was cut at its prime kind of or maybe a little beyond its prime so it's got it's got some seeds but all of that energy in that plant is stored because it was dried and now that it's decomposing um, it's feeding all the microbes and the bugs and the worms and everything and I think that after I pull these out, I will tarp the whole area and that will really bring all the bugs up because it's going to be a dark, warm place and they will start to break the mulch down and I'm, I'm confident that it's really going to benefit my soil in the long run, even though it's a little weedy right now. Another reason why I'm not that worried about it is that I'm not going to let these potatoes probably get 100% full grown. I'm going to harvest this patch as I need it um, to put in CSA boxes. So I'll start when the potatoes are smaller. Um, really here in the next couple weeks I can start harvesting them because they're flowering right now. Potato flower. Which means that the potatoes are forming underneath the ground. So in just a week or two, I'll be able to pull up. I mean, they'll be smaller, but those are the most delicious potatoes you have ever eaten. It's, it's called a new potato. And the skin is so thin and soft, it just slips right off. You don't even need butter with these. Obviously, I'm going to put copious amounts of butter because I have dairy cows. Why wouldn't I? But you wouldn't have to if you didn't want to. And then I also have another potato plot planned, but I'm not sure where I'm going to stuff that in at. And that I will plant probably at the beginning of July. Yeah. I will plant my second potato patch at the beginning of July, and those will be more for storage. So those are Yukon Gold and Kennebec, both of which store really, really well. And uh, I will hoard those for me, but these are all to eat fresh, so I'm not that worried about it. Temptation is about to get the better of me because I really want to pull up one of these plants, even though I know it's not time. You just... Like I was saying, like some of my favorite crops are the ones that grow underground because it's a surprise. But also, if you want to check on it, you can't because it's under the ground. So. so, I'm back at the house. I've brought my cucumbers back up and I've got this stainless steel sink that I wash my veggies in. But the trick to having crispy vegetables um, in the heat of the summer is what's called taking the field heat off. So you're either putting them in a really cold water bath, which is my preferred method, or you can stick them straight into a cool room. But I think the best is rehydrating them in some ice cold, clean water. Um, not only is that rehydrating them, but any dirt on there, um, it loosens up and you can just wipe it right off and then you can put it into your cool storage of choice. Obviously, leafy greens mainly benefit from this, or not mainly, but greatly benefit from this because they have open stems and they're rehydrating. Um, but anything from peppers to cucumbers to squash, really, I don't know if, I don't think tomatoes need it. Tomatoes are fine. I will just leave this here for like an hour or two while I do other things and then I'll come back and I'll put them in my cold room and I'll give you a little tour. Not that the tour is gonna to take anything longer than the 10 seconds it is going to take to show you, but I'm happy.
There you go. Well, extra. Go get those last two. Mommy. Hi guys, I'm back. It's a little later in the day. I had to run to, we have like a little Amish grocery store that I get all my goodies at. They get seasonal produce from like the produce auction or whatever. And I'm not going to lie to you, the main reason why I bought this many is because it came in this cute basket. <laughs> but I got a bunch of peaches not really a great price but i paid it happily because fresh fruit i don't buy a whole lot of things out of season i might splurge once in a while um, much to my kids dismay but i try to eat with the seasons and um but what should i make out of these peaches i think i still have canned peaches from last year um but what's your peach favorite pie. canned peach recipe peach Ooh, pie peach, peach pie, pie. You like it? But it's time, don't look at my junk behind me. <laughs> it's time to take the cucumbers out of this water. That's really why I turned the camera on so that I could fit, follow through with a task, you know? Okay, I have these flip top totes. You can get them lots of places. Someone gave these to me. They say Dollar General, but that side doesn't, this side does. But um, I didn't steal them from the Dollar General. <laughs> But it's nice because produce needs to be stored at a high humidity. Cool temperature is high humidity. So I have my cool room set at about between 50 and 55. And um, the fact that you can close the top keeps all the humidity in the plants. Or else they start to get shrivelly and weird. But now that they've been soaking for a good hour or more than an hour, a couple hours, they're nice and clean if they had any dirty spots. And if they still have a dirty spot, it's very easy because it's been soaking, you just wipe it off. I don't think I mentioned it, but my tote, I drilled uh, holes with a large drill bit in the bottom of this tote so that the water that's currently on these cucumbers from being in the bath drains out. Thought I mentioned that because if you didn't have whole drainage holes, it would just be gross on the bottom of your container. So now we are currently in my unfinished but functioning so far cold room. And what I mean by unfinished is we're not done putting up the insulation uh, to keep all the cold air in. But we have an AC unit with a cool bot. The cool bot tricks, there's like literally just a couple little pieces. It's super easy to put together. Um, but it connects to the thermostat inside of this and it tricks it into thinking that it's warmer than it is so that it can constantly cool to a much lower temperature. If you wanted to do like meat processing, you could use a cool bot because I think it'll go all the way down to like 39 or something. Don't quote me on that. But what I'm using it for is a cooler for my vegetables and to harvest flowers in ahead of time if I needed to. So I'm back inside and as you can see, I've got things to do. I think this winter I'm gonna take the time and I'm probably gonna take a course because it's proven to be difficult. But I wanna make hard cheeses, but right now all I've mastered is soft cheeses. So I'm gonna make a big batch of mozzarella and I use, um, I think her name's Kate. Yeah, Kate from Venison for Dinner. I use her mozzarella recipe. It's in tutorial. It's super easy. It's like the no fuss method, which is right up my alley. And plus, her mozzarella, you skim the cream, so now I can make butter and mozzarella. But what I'll do with this mozzarella, because obviously this is a large batch. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gallons of milk that's not even going to fit in my cheese pot. Um, but what I'll do is I'll make a big batch. This is like how you have convenience food when it's from scratch. I'll make a really big batch and then I'll freeze it. 
And then once it's frozen, it's very easy to grate. I just use like the food processor with the grater side and I just grate it into whatever. Usually we're using this on like pizza and stuff or like topping on a casserole or something. So um, it freezes really well in my experience. It's just a little liquidy, but if you squeeze it out with a towel before you cook with it, it won't make that extra moisture. Or if you're lazy like me, you don't do that and it's just a little bit soggier than it would be if you used it from the store. <laughs> this stuff is just so natural to me now. It's funny how um, you don't even think about all the things that aren't normal to other people and it's just very it's a very normal part of my life for the last three years is milk and managing milk and the way that raw milk is you know it separates at the top but this milk is about a week old the longer your milk sits the thicker the cream gets because all of the milk that was intermixed in the cream has had a chance to all the way separate and I just wanted to show you how magical this is. This would definitely be considered heavy cream. Like I already stuck it in there and it is thick. It's not spoiled, it's just full cream, full fat, <laughs> all the fat. I know what I can tell you why I'm waiting for the cheese pot to heat up. I've been drinking this every single day and I'm addicted. I'm addicted to it. So I typically brew two, for me, cups, which is more than a cup, but two big insulated cups of coffee every day. I don't, however, now that it's summertime and I milk earlier, and I'm not inside. I only have time to drink the one. I, I have, I'm a very, I like a routine. I like to do the same thing every day at the same time. Um, anyway, so I'm still in the habit of making the same amount of coffee that I always do, even though I don't drink it all in the morning. But well, I'll come back for what's left in the coffee pot. And I've got like a little personal blender. That's what this is. I will put, just black coffee ideally I would do a frozen banana for that like icy creaminess but my son didn't eat the other half of this banana and so I'm gonna use this fresh banana sounds weird but it's good then I'm gonna do some ice cubes for that iced coffee feeling and I'm gonna blend it I only have room for two ice cubes today I make my own coffee creamer Typically, it's just maple syrup, milk, and cinnamon. But I had to use honey this batch because I'm out of maple syrup. And my Amish store did not have any maple syrup, and I'm very upset about it. So I'm just going to top it with a little bit of milk. Sweetened milk, if you will. So I bought this off of the interwebs, and I was like, you know how like when you're looking at a million things and you finally decide one and you thought that you read everything? This is an organic peanut butter, and peanuts are sprayed with so many pesticides. So, But I already bought it, and it's a big tub, and I'm going to eat it. But <laughs> this is the chocolate peanut butter powder. Now, it does have good ingredients other than the fact it's not organic because it's just peanut flour, cacao, sea salt, and cane sugar fermented cane sugar but this is what makes it magical I'm gonna add like a big heaping scoop to my very full thing that I wasn't supposed to fill this full and then I'm gonna blend it and it is like <sighs> Starbucks could never I don't even first of all I don't leave my house but even if I did I never get coffee out because it's so disappointing like I make better coffee at home and I have been buying Beulah Coffee, Jess's brand, and it's delicious. I get the Ethiopian light roast, and it's a what? Peanut butter is one of my weaknesses. So like a chocolatey peanut butter coffee sounds weird, but it's so good. You don't really even taste the peanut butter. Delicious. 
So this is my um, afternoon pick-me-up, and then you should try it. Well, shoot. <laughs> I got busy, and I forgot that I was filming this. So sorry. Um, this is my mozzarella. I love this recipe because there's no fussing. I don't like the stretching and the pulling and the shaping. I hate that part. The, it's hot liquid. I'm not good at it. Um, so in the venison for dinner recipe, you can see the way here. So it's got plenty of that. When I'm all done, I'll drain it off, but it's fine. It actually preserves it better if it's floating in a little bit of this way. But in her recipe, you just plop it all into your Tupperware and that's it. Then you just slice it to use it, which is perfectly fine for me. I think I'm going to make a big batch of these mozzarella balls, but these are balls, but the rest of it will be squares. It will be mozzarella cubes, if you will. And see if I can freeze it and thaw it. I don't know if the texture will be the same. But I was going to tell you what I did inside of this jar, and I forgot. But I will tell you now. So inside the jar are my mozzarella balls. I just covered with olive oil, step one. I ran outside to my herbs and I grabbed a little bit of basil, thyme, and oregano. I was going to put hot pepper flakes in here because that's the recipe um, that I was following, but we don't like super spicy. And the, the garlic that I used is fresh green garlic so it's kind of spicy in itself so I think that that'll be spicy enough and I'll let this sit for honestly I'm going to try this tonight but it'll be even better after I let it sit tomorrow but doesn't this look lovely think about like a flat a flatbread pizza with your marinated mozzarella or this sliced up on some crackers and then you can use you want to use this within about five days. This is fresh mozzarella. But once your mozzarella, the cheese is gone, this would make the best salad marinade. Like, or marinade on meat. Or to use in salad dressing. Or to dip crusty bread in. Or to brush on the crust of your pizza for just some examples, but I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. So sorry you missed my instruction. It's later in the day. It's almost eight o'clock. <laughs> really, I should be making dinner, but I remembered that I didn't close out this video. And so I thought I'd take a little walk back to the garden and show you um, what I forgot to film earlier. Man, I'm out of the habit of filming myself and I just keep doing tasks without picking the camera up. I'm sorry. This little walk right here is my absolute favorite. I remember when we bought the place, I had less than an acre lot in town. And then I came here and I would just walk this trail and be so overwhelmed and couldn't believe that it was all mine. And by overwhelmed, I mean in a good way. But I love this little trail. I love that this old tree is taken over by a grapevine. I just love the whimsy of this little trail. It kind of curves a little bit. It goes back to the woods. I love this stump. I've got an evening cocktail because I des I deserve it. Um, I like this, this tree that has wild grapes on it. I like being able to walk back here and see my little girl cows. Um, by the way, in the time that I took a break from YouTube, we got another cow and calf pair. I'll have to introduce you sometime. It's, she's literally Honey Junior and then Honey Junior Junior. They're both jerseys and it's the same exact color as Honey. They're all just like Russian nesting dolls. Honey's the biggest. Then there's Mercy, the one I bought, and then Faith is the calf. And they're all going up for milking time right now. Thank goodness my husband is kind to me and he takes the evening shift because he knows I just don't have anything left by this time of the day is really hard for me. So I'm really glad I have that. I got a little kitty licking my toes.
The lighting is so lovely. I should really try to come out here more, shouldn't I? Because it is so beautiful. It's a good reflection time, I think. Um, plus, I've mentioned it before, but I'm an introvert. And so having quiet time is how like, I get my brain together. It's how I recharge. I like to be alone. I like solitude to a point. <laughs> um, I always joke and tell people that I would be happiest like living in a little cottage cabin on the side of a mountain with a meadow and a spring and just running around. <laughs> But nevertheless, um, I brought you guys out here to show you a very exciting thing. Frustrating, but exciting. Frustrating because it's not going the way I thought and it needs some more tweaking. But exciting because it's like the end of an era. For the last two seasons, I've been, for one, steadily expanding the garden. I think I'm over an acre, definitely over an acre. Uh, of cultivated ground now and I didn't have a single bit of irrigation for the last two years. I've been hand watering, dragging hundreds of feet of hose, <laughs> watering this garden or the opposite, not watering enough because ain't nobody got time to do that all the time. But I'm happy to announce that I have irrigation. These are Thinninger uh, wobblers. They're the Excel wobblers. Right now I only have six, um, but there's soon to be like 25-ish to irrigate my whole place. And what a weight off your shoulders because rain is never promised. Drought feels almost inevitable these days. Um, we're not getting enough irrigation or enough rainfall here to really keep crops steadily growing, not at the rate at which I need them to, um, for like quick turnover reasons. And I think experiencing less water, my plants are more stressed, more susceptible to pests. Um, plus in order to keep your soil biology going and like the fungal uh, people in your soil and the microbes and the bacteria and the bugs it's got to be they like a nice uh, moist environment so without constant moisture or steady moisture they leave and I don't want them to leave I want them to stay so while I'm not totally finished with this and you know if you've been here very long I like to do stuff all the way I need to do all of it I don't care if I'm hurting by the end, I need to get it done. So leaving it unfinished does not feel good to me, but I've got to just let go because there's nothing I can do about it. We don't have what we need to finish it. Um, but this is exciting. This is very, very exciting. I can keep things alive now. If I don't, then it's my fault, you know, not just the water's fault. So I feel better now that my plants are getting a much needed drink, especially because we have a heat wave coming and um, it's going to be 90 degrees for like, or above for the foreseeable future and no rain in the forecast because that's just how it goes sometimes. And so my, my late spring crops uh, very much need a drink. My lettuce needs a drink. I keep checking every single day to see if the broccoli has headed up yet. It has still no heads on the broccoli, but I keep checking. And it had a very little pest pressure up until like literally this week. And now the cabbage moths have come to eat my plants, probably because they were more stressed um, now without the rain. <gasps> devil there's cucumber beetles out here so sick of the bugs but anyway I've got to get off here because I do unfortunately have to go back to the house and fix dinner 
at least for my children. I don't know what I got on me, but I've got like spots, so. I'm thoroughly dirty, but um, this video was very random, but thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Uh, we got some work done and I took you along with me successfully without forgetting the whole day. I mean, I did forget a couple times, but I'm here at the end to close it out. <laughs> um, Soon-ish, hopefully, I will have wine cap mushrooms popping up in this tunnel and then I will share that with you too. But thank you guys for watching. Until next time.